Today, Precarious plays Deus Ex, Human Revolution. I'm ready now. Now I just need to open these doors and then safety. Hmm. Ah, oh, hey Are, Jim. He's still there? Yeah, of course. I mean, Probably. don't say of course <laughs> like it's normal. Activating security scan. Yeah, you know what? Actually, that is atypical of a game from your perspective, isn't it? Yeah, usually whatever I... Usually there's like a secret stash of like gnomes and service personnel that go behind you in a game to pick up all the <laughs> corpses you leave behind. If they just don't explode into energy spheres or coins or Yeah. Except particles. for with the notable exception of Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, you know, speaking Because of... that's part of the mechanic. That's part of what you're supposed to be working with in the game. Speaking of Metal Gear Solid, actually, you know what? Let me do a quick one of these. This has been a bit. Um. There's a reviewer I like online. Yeah. His name is Matthew Matosis. Yeah. I like he, that dude. He had an interesting point to make about the first Metal Gear on the PlayStation, which is that it could have been a bit longer. <clears throat> the moment to moment gameplay mm -hmm. with a little bit of padding. And I get that because if you if you do a head count of the number of enemies there are to interact with because you're not really fighting exactly but mm -hmm. the number of guards that act as challenges mm -hmm. I think it's something like 20 in the entire game mm -hmm. that's it wow yeah there are I think more than that because of action sequences um, but actual guards that you are intended to sneak around I think that there are only a couple dozen And he raised the point that they could have had like a, a second copy of several areas, like mm -hmm. a, a second freezer room or a second uh, bay to the hangar that you start in, for example. Actually, I think they... Do they have two? Well, they could have had another one. They could have reused the asset and padded it out with different combinations of like cameras and soldiers and different arrays, right? Mm-hmm. And I kind of wonder if this DLC might not be a, a case against that. Because at the time, I was like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Because it would have been I, nice to have a little bit of a longer game. Yeah, well, the game mm -hmm. part of the game. Because it's yeah. still... Metal Gear Solid is is uh, still quite long. Considering all of the cutscenes. Yeah, yeah. There's the joke of movie gear solid. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Um, I... I think I started with three. And I feel like outside of uh, the first... First few hours. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's the, the virtuous mission. Mm -hmm. Because you have the virtuous mission and Operation Snake Eater. Yeah. Um, I feel like the virtuous mission is paced much more like a typical Metal Gear experience. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I feel like it has a pretty good balance of game to movie. So yeah. that moniker, the guy that at like the the rental store where I was renting Metal Gear Solid Three from, yeah. Was like, ah, you're gonna play Movie Gear Solid. And I was like, what? <laughs> so it's, it's funny. It's funny to me that you mentioned that. Yeah. Because it's that, it only felt like that to me, from my perspective, uh, after I went back to the other games. Mm, I see. Like, whenever I tried to play the GameCube version of. Uh, the first one, uh, Twin Snakes, mm -hmm. what it's called. And so this, you feel like this DLC is an argument against, against stretching it out? Yeah, because I feel like they might have might have 
had a tighter experience, and then they were like, well, maybe we add a second corridor. Maybe we add a third prison floor, mm-hmm. for example. Yeah. You know? Just to beef it up a little bit. Yeah, because, I mean, we have the assets. Might as well put more game in. But I think that the... I think that... I wonder if you could play this independently. Like, I wonder if you had to experience this in the middle of the story mm-hmm. whenever they released it as a as DLC. Mm-hmm. Because I think if I were in a position to have played Deus Ex Human Revolution and then there was a two or three month break and then I came back to it just to play this, mm-hmm. I feel like this would be a much better, this would be an appropriate length. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Boy, that thing is unfriendly looking. Yeah, I'm gonna assume... Like, I don't know why I would trigger that laser. Yeah. But I don't want to test it. Yeah, I was like, I don't want to touch it. Don't touch it. And also, this is... I, I didn't really think about it before, but... Having to do this is a bit of a pain. But is it? Because I think that they had some more guards patrolling. Yeah. But it was kind of nice. And that was much faster than the first time I went through that. Yeah. Because I, I already knew the layout. Yeah. So maybe that's kind of nice. Being able to learn a space and then go back through it. That yeah. is very satisfying in other games, especially like Metroid, for example, or hmm. Castlevania. Metroid wouldn't know, wouldn't know what that's like. <laughs> Don't see anything around here that seems very Metroidy to me. No, nothing Aww. at all. <laughs> oh my god. So I'm just all tore up about the whole idea of this entire situation that this. DLC has put us in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, this... Specifically what's going on in this red corridor that is being supported by the entire base. Mm. Oh, that's one interesting thing that I, I didn't notice. What? Until I saw it back as footage. Yeah. So it's one directional glass. Oh. So these are actually mislabeled because they're not interrogation rooms. These are observation rooms. Oh. Dang signage order didn't get put through right. <laughs> you just can't get quality workmanship on this human trafficking <laughs> expeditions. It's just like nobody wants to contract with you. I just don't it's get so it. It's so weird because, I mean, they're <laughs> hard workers. Yeah. Do you think these people are going to isolate and psychically abuse themselves? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Not no. for the first 36 hours at least. <laughs> mm. I promise I will try to help you soon. Ma'am. <laughs> oh god, walking past her knowing she's there hurts me. Ah. That's when you know that the game is doing what it's supposed to though. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> yes. Is that when you know? Is that what tips you off? Oh boy, I feel traumatized. Good job, games. <laughs> uh, well, uh, it's being very effective at telling the story that it's trying to tell. Oh, those aren't those aren't bodies. <laughs> this is terrible. Access granted. You know, you ever read books that make you cry? Uh, all books make me cry. <laughs> I'm very susceptible to paper cuts. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. That's suspicious. Oh. Um, oh. Oh, how far down? Well, not that. I'm just thinking that that looked awfully playable. Oh, am I going under the water? I would prefer not. If we could avoid it, Jason, I would rather. Jason, where are you? In a well-concealed elevator inside the prison's restricted wing. Your gun-running neural engineer deserves a raise. I take it the eye worked then. Good. Now listen, if what you say is true, 
If Burke really is using the prisoners here as lab rats, I need proof. Hard evidence that I can take to Interpol. An entire prison full of kidnapped civilians isn't enough? You're an ex-cop, Jensen. You tell me. How many death row inmates crying on about their innocence have you seen getting out? Mm -hmm. Point taken. I'll see what I can find. Yikes. Surface, come back. Mm -hmm. Come back, surface. No. Uh, no, I think <laughs> you're going down into the Earth's core. Don't worry, you're not underwater anymore. You're under several hundred feet of stone that's under several hundred feet of water. We can't be friends anymore. <laughs> if you're going to speak such truths to me. Uh, boy, that is some freaky stuff if you let yourself think about it. Like, just subways? Which is why I'm not going to... Yeah. Everything is fine. Subways. You talk about subways like they are directly adjacent to Magmore Caverns, and I don't think they are. I don't think they're actually that deep underground. Well, okay. Not all of them, but one of them uh, was at least five full flights of stairs underground. That's too much. <laughs> That's too and much. A truly an excessive number of floors underground. That's okay. Like, assuming that each floor with infrastructure meet is, say, 10 feet. That's 50 feet. That's too many feet. And I stand by that. That's too far underground. That's an entire... That's... Oh, is that what this has all been about? What? Oh. Please. Please don't leave me like this. No hope. Uh, let's not. I'm not worried about the water anymore. Mm. This is much more related to the events of this game than I imagined. This might be really gross. Maybe you don't want to look. No, I'm morbidly curious about a lot of things. It's the people's emotions that bother me. Ooh, that's so that's cool. Die, you, okay, the tables have turned. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. If we're talking about the body as an interesting machine with parts that do things, that's great. Uh, and as soon as it's hurting people, it's not okay anymore. You know, that's definitely where I stand. What is that for? I'm trying to get it on screen. Panchea. That's the... I think that they're seeding the ocean. It's a, it's a borehole, if I remember correctly. Staffed with augmented workers, primarily. I think it's intended to uh, reverse catastrophic global climate change by seeding the oceans with iron? I think that that's... I think that's how it works. Okay, but why the bodies? Completely different project. Okay. Or is it? <laughs> okay. 